In a viral interview, FCT Minister Yenso Wiki referred to as the godfather himself akin to a low budget Idiami, according to Sinfumara. He has denied allegations surrounding the chaos attributed to his camp in River State. He claimed ignorance of the events and questioned why is that Fubara is not arresting those involved. If he truly is bold enough, he should call them out. Well, it appears this fight is far from over. Kindly take a listen to what the Arise crew has to say. River State Governor Simna Lai Fubara has said his administration is working with the Nigeria Police and Department of State Services, DSS, to expose those behind the recent attack on Council Secretariat in Ikwere, Emohua, and Eleme local government areas. Fubara stated that his administration will not watch political thugs run berserk. He said sus suspects will be arrested and made to account for their atrocities. The governor said his government had inaugurated a judicial commission of inquiry on the killings and blasts that took place in the state. Responding to the situation in River State, Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, Nyesonwike, said he wa it was Fuba who instigated Monday's violence by disobeying an order of the courts that halted the local government election. However, calmness and normalcy returned to the 23 local government areas of River State yesterday as the elected council chairmen resumed at their respective councils. This commission that we're inaugurating today, I think, has been overdue because some time ago, about this time last year, a similar thing happened. And because we believed that we are one family, that whatever differences we have definitely will be resolved internally. But it has become very clear that rather than get close to the path of peace, that this state is gradually turning to, would I say, a kingdom where law and order are no longer the order of the day. All right, uh, River State still definitely on the front burner this morning, yeah. Rufai. And later on, we're going to be talking about the legal aspect of things, uh, which the FCT minister referred to that it's because the governor didn't obey court ruling. That's why what happened over the weekend on Monday happened. But your take on this story, Rufai? A couple of things. I saw the interview there. The FCT minister averted most of the questions and said some things that were away from the margins of veracity. Number one, he talked about the fact that the reason why the fight started was because Fubara was trying to remove the National Assembly person. No, there was pretty much coexistence in the National Assembly until they started pivoting to him because of the initial fight he had with them, and things went awry. Secondly, he also talked about the fact that yeah, he's got, he needs nothing from Fubara. But the question is, why is he putting a hand in River State? He was talking about the court case filed by the APC. He's in the PDP. What's his concern with the APC's case? And why is it that all of a sudden this man has become empowered? The APC person has become empowered. Why all of a sudden? Another question I would have loved to ask him yesterday is, he talked about the fact that he went through a lot of disruptions in his own tenure and everything. Is that good enough to not meet at that level of destruction? He said the violence was because of... Um, the fact that uh, he didn't follow the court order, but he also forgets that there was another subsisting yes. court order by the River State High Court. He praised the judiciary, but he also condemned the state government for going to get court orders for River State High Court. So if you can do it successfully, how about you getting checked by the River State High Court and you're saying, oh, they have a lot of expertise there? Then he went further to say, oh, Fubara should, he knows the people that did the acid, he should prosecute them immediately. No, he has to go through a judicial panel of inquiry to be able to get to remote courses, because if he goes ahead and he becomes high-ended, he will be seen as, as a dictator. So I think the man largely just evaded most of the questions, because I would have loved to put most of those questions to him and press him on those questions. What we just call for is let peace reign. And he also said uh, it's not because of resources fighting for Barra, that he has his own budget. Please, Mr. Wiki, that money is for the FCT, it's not for you. Why do you call it your own budget? You might just oversee it as the FCT minister. And when you're not there tomorrow, another person will oversee the budget. Please. 
Let's peace reign. Okay, what are the issues in uh, River State yesterday? They are as follows. The first is that uh, Governor Fubara uh, tried to uh, assert control. Two things he did yesterday. He swore in four new commissioners. And after that, he also uh, set up uh, a seven-man panel of inquiry. The four commissioners, he was telling them about their responsibility, how to uh, help to move River State forward. The seven-man panel of inquiry he was telling them to investigate the issue of arson that occurred on October 7 in River State. And he told that uh, commission of inquiry that perhaps if they were able to do their job and identify the persons involved, uh, this would be the end to arson and violence in River State. Well, again, we've been saying that, uh, you know, um, what's his name? Uh, Governor Fubara has become the man. He's stepping up. Uh, he's asserting himself. And I think that's a very good development and that he would uh, sustain it, even if he's been backed by elders of uh, River State, but whatever it is. He is the governor, and he needs to assert himself. The father, the son becoming the father of the father, as I have argued previously on this program, uh, and he's following the example of the godfathers before him, he too is emerging as a godfather. The future of his own godfatherism will be here to analyze it and to determine whether it is right or wrong. That's the first part. The second part is that the 23 local government uh, council areas, whose chairman had been sworn in by this same Governor Fubara, uh, you know, could not uh, access their offices on Monday this week. Because in LMA, Emoha, Obiakwa, Aoda East, and Equerry, local governments, you know, there was attack on the uh, various local governments. But the uh, various local government uh, chairmen have been able to seize control and they returned. In LMA and, uh, and uh, I think Equerry, the local government chairmen could not access their offices as a result of arson that had been committed. But they were there, and they had their boys also saying, well, with them. If they, if they dare, let them, uh, if they can dare us, let them show up. So what is all of this about? It's about chaos in River State. And I think it's important that they have a new commissioner of police on the ground, even if the police is responding a bit lately, to now say that, look, we have a responsibility as the police to enforce law and order in River State. You recall that President Tinubu intervened. Some people think he intervened too late. The police are saying that they were obeying Federal High Court uh, order to stay away from the election. But the police have now been reminded, wittingly or unwittingly, that their constitutional duty is to protect the state, ensure law and order, protect life and security in any part of Nigeria. And that is why I think that it's important that the conundrum about conflicting, contradictory judgments by a state high court and a federal high court is something that needs to be addressed by the judiciary. And uh, Justice Kudira uh, Kikere Kunitsigen had pointed out that she will address the problem of indiscipline anywhere in Nigeria. And I think that this is a, a what do they call it? A test case for her in uh, River State. As for Wiki, Wiki showed up on television yesterday, uh, and he was saying, well, you know, if Fubara knows uh, who the uh, arsonists are, why is he setting up uh, a panel of inquiry? And that uh, in any case, he should just ask that those people should be arrested. He distanced himself from the arson. Well, Governor, what Governor Fubara is doing, basically, is to follow due process. He says uh, Governor Fubara uh, knelt down for him. That why did he kneel down for him? That he would like to know, did he commit an offense? Uh, you know, there's a lot in River State that the people need to deal with. But I will end with Tony Ko's uh, statement on this program yesterday, who said that there should be a meeting of the Godfathers, Wiki, uh, Sir Peter Odili and uh, Sir Rutimi Arichi Amichi, I think he's also a knight, you know, whatever. 
you know, that they should come together and decide to give peace a chance in River State. Because these are the main leaders of a River State, and they have their followers and the godfathers. In fact, the suggestion from Tony Cole was very calm yesterday, perhaps the only calm politician in River State. All the other ones are, yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, Tony Cole came here yesterday, and it was very calm. He said, look, the leaders should come together and say the interest of the people must prevail. What must prevail is the interest of the people of River State. Tonya Cole has already given them the direction in which they can possibly go. Can they consider that and give peace a chance and not create a 1965 situation in River State that President Tinubu would find himself having to struggle with? Well, he, he had actually said that that uh, meeting, the round table of River's elders, should be convened by the president and that he should bring them all to the table. I don't know to what extent or how that would be possible, but that perhaps might be the beginning of the path to peace in the state. But let me just uh, touch on one thing, which is this thing around the arsonists and this, uh, th this penchant for destroying state properties and the commonwealth of the people when there's a crisis in the state. Yes, yesterday, I had talked about the fact that last year, actually, almost a month to this day, uh, 29th of October 2023, the State House of Assembly was also torched. It was burnt. So, I mean, there were different very, variety of stories around that. And when the governor now says that he wants to unveil or unravel and in investigate the people behind it, then you'd go back to what's happening with those who were behind that particular incident. Yes, there, um, the, um, a federal high court in Abuja had arraigned five people to that, you know, to answer for that. But usually what happens, and I hope that the people will listen to this, is that there are the low hanging, the easy praise, who are then picked, and then they take on the responsibility or pay for the price of the things that whoever it is is sponsoring them does. Till now, no one, it hasn't, the case hasn't been settled, the matter is still in court. But it's just to say that when justice is prolonged for such a long time, especially for a crime like that, it's almost, you know, it's delayed. It's almost justice denied. And so when the, the, the governor says that, yes, he's going to ensure that everybody who was responsible for that will be brought to the book, that would be a great deterrence. That would be a great way to kill impunity in the state, where any small thing, you burn the, you, you, you destroy properties, you waste the people's money. And then the people, even after the dust has settled, as we've now heard, thankfully, that in River State there's relative calm and peace in the 23 local council areas. But who's going to pay for the damage that has happened? It's the people who are going, the money that should go to infrastructure, money that should go to running the state, money that should go to paying salaries, money that should go to fixing roads would then go to rebuilding something that some people who felt aggrieved or in a political play decided to destroy. This is what is happening in our state when we talk about um, politics. And that's why I hope the governor will make good on his word and not just a big show of a statement, that those who are behind the arson will be brought to book and they will be made an example of so that in the future we, people just don't resort to destroying state properties because they feel personally aggrieved or politically aggrieved in the state.